everybody should be smiling today now. <laughs> it is it's Mother's Day. This has always been a, a special day for me. Um, some of y'all really don't know my history about Mother's Day. This used to be one of the a very, very hard day for me. Some of y'all do know my history. Um, there was many, many years to where um, I didn't really like being around anybody on Mother's Day. The reason why was I could not have children. Um, but the Lord had different plans for me. The Lord had different plans for Jeremy. Um, you know, and as, as y'all have heard my tale, and I, I've spoken about this um, many, many times, God is always right. Um, Sometimes I do talk to him and I go, I know, Lord, you're always right in your plans, but I don't understand your plans. And I'm very honest with him. And I've learned the older that I get that I have to be honest with him. And I lay it out for him. And I go, I don't like it that you're right because I don't like what you're putting me through. Just don't like it. And, of course, he tells me in his soft way sometimes, I really don't care. <laughs> because this is what you need. And, you know, this is what you need. This is what your family needs. And trust me, when you get to the end of this, you're going to look back and you're going to realize I was there with you every step of the way. So, um, this prayer that, and it was laid on my heart, and we can walk with the Lord, and as we were talking about in Sunday school, um, and you're part of the Lord's family, the Holy Spirit will tell you to do things. And when he tells you to do things, you learn to do it. So this was laid on my heart to do. And this prayer is for all women. We have women here who are mothers, even though their babies are not with them. Their babies are in heaven. Um, we have women here that are not yet mothers. We have women that, um, you know, those that are, might see this on our YouTube channel. We have women that could have, you know, I hate to say it, went through an, the abortion process. Um, but guess what? You're a mother. Your baby is in heaven. Um, so those that might be watching it on YouTube, I don't know how many that you see where the dough is. Those of you that might see it and have gone through this process, there's forgiveness for you. Um, this is for future moms, moms now, moms everywhere. So if you would, please bow your heads with me and please receive this um, if you're a lady, if you're a mom. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the blessings of motherhood. I thank you for the unconditional love that moms give. I pray to you today and ask for your protection and guidance upon our mothers, Lord. Give our mothers strength in times of difficulty. And Father, comfort our moms in moments of sorrow. Lift her faith, Father God. Allow her to remain strong as she places her trust in you above all else. Father God, I pray for your hand of your favor upon our moms here today. Please grant them wisdom and discernment as they serve you faithfully. Shield them from the cares and anxieties of this world so that they are not overwhelmed by the cares and burdens of this world. Strengthen our moms here today in your grace when life storms come rushing in guiding them through each trial until it passes. Father God, I praise you for the love and care of our moms because moms are a source of encouragement and hope during dark days. Father God, my offering joy in bright days. Lord, I thank you for your angels that surround these moms here today at all times. May these moms here today find peace in your family. I offer this prayer to you today in honor of Mother's Day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sandra.
Turn with us to page 58.
wonderful day, dear Lord, to be in your house and worship you. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, today, please forgive us all of our many sins and shortcomings in life, dear Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, just please move this portion of the service, dear Lord, where it's time to give back a portion of what you have blessed us with, dear Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, just please make sure it's used in your service, dear Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, just please be with each mother today, dear Lord. And lead God and direct them in the right way. We ask all these blessings in thy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
sing much anymore. <coughs> but old Bill Saunders, uh, a good buddy back there on, my, on the back, street, back seat Baptist back there, <laughs> uh, he pretexts all through the week and he always encourages me and I appreciate his text so much, Bill, every morning and every evening. And uh, he asked me to sing a song this morning. So I'm going to do my best, Bill. So pray for me as I try to sing a beautiful old hymn, and the choir is going to help me. And because he lives. Thank you. 
so good to see y'all on this very special day today. What is today? Mother's Day. And I'm going to give y'all all an opportunity to say something nice about your mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's a good cook. <laughs> That's important, buddy, I tell you. Absolutely. Absolutely. She don't cook enough. <laughs> She's probably Amen. pretty busy. <laughs> what else would you like to say about my stretch and so forth? Good at making chili, yeah. How about you, Pat? Anything you like to say? What are you thankful for for mom? Huh? She's another good cook. That's a good cook. Thank the Lord. I know my little one, uh, Eli, uh, in vacation Bible school, when he was about the age of a uh, uh, trip and jet, uh, the vacation Bible school teacher asked him, says, what are you most thankful for? And he just, why he just handed out that? He said, fried chicken. <laughs> So thankful for all of you uh, young men and our little ones here too, and uh, uh, we're thankful for our mamas. We love our mamas, and uh, we are so thankful for them. We'll all agree on that. We're thankful for them for good cooking and washing our clothes and taking good care of us. We owe a lot to our mamas and for loving us. So, uh, who would like to pray for us this morning? Anybody? Would anybody like to pray this morning? Okay. Let's pray. Let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for these children this morning, Lord, and what they mean to us. We lift up their mothers to you, Father, and bless them in a very special way. Uh, God, just thank you for your presence with us today. Uh, be with us all. In the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Miss Bibi has you something back here. <coughs> so, uh, Grab you one of these, and she has something in here as well. So, uh, let's see. Oh, boy. You want to tell us about your car this morning? Huh? Tell us about it. Yeah. Well, it's a 
A mother should not be proud. A mother should not dishonor others. A mother should not be self-seeking. A mother should not be easily angry. A mother should keep no records of wrongs. A mother should not delight in evil, but rejoice in truth. A mother should protect, trust, hope, and persevere. And a mother's love should never fail. Now, all of these characteristics describe a godly woman. And we're all familiar with Proverbs 31 of the virtuous woman. And beginning with verse 10, I'd like to read. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant, merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold to the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth it girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth. Many daughters have gone virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman, woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Today is the day that we celebrate one of God's greatest gifts to this world. And that's our mom's. I want to include all women under the umbrella of what we're going to say this morning. You know, woman was the last creation of Almighty God. And I've heard it said in fun that Adam went to sleep, he had surgery on his side, and he woke up with a pain in the neck. <laughs> about her standing and her pride. The word virtuous is talking about someone that's strong in, 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 in uh, integrity and in character. A woman like that is more valuable than anything in this world. And that's why the Bible says, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing, 
and obtaineth favor of the Lord. If God has given you or gave you a good, godly woman, He blessed you with something that money can't buy. In verse 11, it talks about her perfection. A godly woman always has the best interest of those she loves in her heart, and that she's exactly what God made her to be. A help me. She's a help me for her mate. And we find that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And she supports and encourages her husband, and she gives of her talents. She works hard, she shops, she cooks, she keeps up the home. She's a giver of all the things that God has given her. And her, her family is the one that benefits from the gift of her giving of her seed. She gives to the ones she loves, and she does it unconditionally. She takes care of the necessary details in the home. She gets up early and she works late. She sees all about the needs of her children and her husband. She's there when they're hungry and when they're sick and when they need somebody to care and to listen. She gives her life for the ones that she loves. Most men and children don't have a clue of all the work that a woman does. A godly woman is filled with compassion. She has a passion to help others. A godly woman sees the needs that other men, or that men, us <coughs> men, don't see a lot of times. And she reaches out in all kinds of ways to help others. That's the mark of a godly woman. Just imagine a world without kind-hearted godly women. I don't want to. A godly woman provides words of wisdom to her husband and children. And she's gentle with a way about her to ease the hurts in life. She keeps her eye on the ones that God has given her to love. She watches their lives to make sure that they have what they need and that they're not walking down the wrong path. Whatever needs to be done, a godly woman is willing to do it. And her primary concern is that the needs of her family are met. And the book of Proverbs, it talks about the difference in a wise woman and a foolish woman. The Proverbs 31 woman does everything in her power to build up her home. A foolish woman does everything she can to tear down uh, what she's been given. I want to ask you a sobering question this morning. How long has it been since you said thank you? To your mom. How long has it been since you said thank you to your wife? A husband that's received so much from this special woman should praise her for the blessings she has been to him. And men have a duty to their wives. The Lord commands it, in fact, in Ephesians 5, verses 25 and 26. It says, Husbands, Love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. If God has given you a good, godly woman, you ought to love her with all your heart. And thank your sweet Lord above for that blessing. In these last verses of Proverbs 31, we see that a godly woman doesn't uh, do the things she does for the praise of man. Hers is a labor of love. She didn't do it for pats on the back. Or, and she's not concerned uh, of, of looking good in front of, of others. God has entrusted her to care for those that she loves. A godly woman pays more attention to her inner beauty than she does her outward beauty. And she becomes ever more special and more beautiful in the eyes of her family as the years go by. The true secret of her beauty is found in her faith. Because she's a woman that loves the Lord. And she's a blessing to others because she works <coughs> daily with the Lord. Let me encourage you this morning to keep on loving Keep giving, keep sacrificing, and keep serving. 
You might think that all you do goes unnoticed sometimes. But one day, at the end of the road of this life, you're going to hear Jesus say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Now these verses that we have looked at this morning from Proverbs 31 causes a lot of women to say, well, I just don't measure up. They feel kind of like the woman that wrote the poem entitled, I Wish I Were a Bear. It goes like this. If you're a bear, you get to hibernate. You do nothing but sleep for six months. I could get used to that. Amen. And another thing, before you hibernate, you're supposed to eat yourself stupid. <laughs> that wouldn't bother me either. And if you're a mama bear, everyone, know, everyone knows that you mean business. You swat anyone who bothers you or your cubs. And if your cubs get out of line, you swat them too. <laughs> your husband expects you to growl when you wake up. He expects you to have hairy legs and excess body fat. He likes it. I wish I were a bear. <laughs> In fact, the fact is, uh, this passage we've talked about is a goal. It's a goal that we strive for. It's not a standard to judge your life by. Now, if you see areas of improvement that you need to work on, you need to do it. And remember, always remember that you're human and nobody expects perfection from you. You're allowed to make mistakes. We all do. And you're allowed to be you. And I want to point out, too, that all of these godly attributes that we've talked about apply to men as well as women this morning. And we all should be striving to hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. May we pray. <coughs> Father, thank you for giving us these wise words from, from Proverbs 31 this morning to serve as a, a, a guide and a roadmap for all of us, not only women, but men as well, Father, to live in such a way that we'll hear those precious words one day when we get to glory. Well done, my good and faithful servant. <clears throat> Father, we count it a privilege to serve you down here. And until it's our time to go, Father, we ask that you continue to guide and lead us through your Holy Spirit and bless us each day of our lives. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're about to have a final <coughs> invitation. And if you never trusted Jesus Christ for salvation, I invite you to come this morning. He died to save sinners like him and me from the fiery pit of hell. And if there's some special lady in your life that you're thankful for this morning, you should come and pray for them. And thank God for them and tell them what they mean to you might be that you need to ask the Lord this morning to help you with your attitude or with something else in your life. If He's spoken to you this morning through His Holy Spirit, please come and let Him have His way. This altar is open just for you. So won't you come? Brother Will. Let's stand and sing the first and last verse of 257 in your free will Baptist hymn, 257. In number 257 as we stand in sin.
Christians. Me and I'll build y'all up your father today. Thank you. 